Hi, welcome to abcbeam.com. In this video, I would introduce you to the basic concept of collaboration in Revit. I will show you how to create a worksheet model, how to open, save, and synchronize, and how to properly close down a worksheet model. Stick around to the end of the video. I would also introduce you to worksheets. What is a worksheet model? The worksheet model in Revit allows more than one person to work on the same project at the same time. Think of it like a shared Google document where multiple people can contribute to the document, but at the end of the day, you end up with just one file. In complex design projects, each team member will have a copy of the file on their local computer. They work on the local copy and they synchronize their changes back into the original file so that you end up with just one file. Want to know how to set up a worksheet model? Come, let me show you. To create a worksheet model, start by creating a new Revit model as you normally would. Go to the Collaborate tab and click Collaborate. You will be prompted to save the model. Make sure you save the model to a server accessible to all your teammates. Once the file is saved, you will be prompted to choose how you want to collaborate. For this tutorial, choose the first option, which is Collaborate within your network. The work set is now activated, confirming that the model is now work shared. Save the model again to create the central model. You will be prompted with a notification letting you know that you are creating a central model. Click Yes. The central model is now created and you can now close the model. You can see how easy it is to create a work shared model. Remember, when you're creating a worksheet model, make sure the central file is saved in a location that is easily accessible to all your teammates, preferably on your office server. In the example we've seen, I've created a local worksheet file. That is, the central model is stored locally within my company server. For collaboration within the cloud, such as using ACC, I'm going to have to make another video to explain that. So subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss that video. Let me now show you the special way of opening a worksheet model. Opening a worksheet model is a bit different from opening a non-worksheet model. Follow these steps to open a worksheet model. Go to the Open File dialog box. Click once on the file. It is important to not double click on the file, only click once on the file. Then make sure create a new local is activated. Click open. Revit will now create a copy of the central model into your computer. The local copy will have your username appended to it, confirming that this local copy belongs to you. Remember, this local copy is stored on your own computer and not on the server. Also, notice that WorkSets is still activated. So now you've successfully opened a WorkShared model and you've worked on it. How do you now synchronize your changes so that the rest of your teammates can see what you are doing and you also can see what they are doing? Let me show you how to properly synchronize your model. How to synchronize your changes with the central model. For demonstration purpose, I will create a basic layout in my local file. To synchronize this change back to the central model, you will not just use the save button, but instead use the synchronize button from the collaboration tab. Click OK and the change would have gone back to the central model.
So now you've seen how to create a work shared model, how to open, save, and synchronize, and how to properly save them. Let me now introduce you to work sets. Work sets in Revit allows you to break various parts of your project into manageable chunks so that your teammates can work independently on those parts without conflict. In the simplest rudimentary form, think of them as card layers. They are more complex than card layers, but imagine you have multiple layers and then you put various objects on, on multiple layers. And now you assign these layers to various team members. They're quite simple to set up. And let me show you. You can access existing work sets under the collaboration tab. To create new work sets, go to the collaboration tab and click work sets. Click add and give your new work set a descriptive name. For example, you might want to create work sets for walls and doors. Click OK and choose No when prompted to specify the active work set. Let's now confirm if our work set is created. But this time, I will access the work sets through the shortcut on the status bar. The status bar also displays the active work set. You can change the active work set from the status bar. I will now change the active work set to walls. This means that every element I create moving forward will be allocated to the walls work set. I will create some walls on the active walls work set. Select one of the walls I just created and check its properties to ensure it's on the correct work set. I will now assign the rest of the walls into the correct work set. To do that, select the walls and change the work set in the property window. Click on any of the walls to make sure they are on the correct work set. Tips to visualizing work sets. Use the work sharing display to visualize the work set by color. This will colorize all the elements in the model according to their assigned work sets. I can now easily see that one of the walls is on the wrong work sets. I will correct this by selecting the wall and assigning it to the correct work sets. I will also assign the doors to the correct work sets. Notice the color changes as I'm assigning them to the correct work set. Turn off work sharing display and synchronize the model. This time, I will use the shortcut on the quick access toolbar to synchronize the model. Before we close the model, let's check the ownership status of the work sets. Open the work sets dialog box. Notice that the walls and doors work sets are owned by me. What this means is that I am the only person that can modify whatever elements that are on those work sets. If I shut down my computer and close for the day, my colleagues will not be able to modify those elements in my absence. So it is important to make sure you relinquish ownership of all work sets before you close the model. Yes, there you have it, an introduction to work set. I will repeat the last part. Make sure you relinquish all work sets that has been assigned to you before you close for the day. If you fail to do that, colleagues will not be able to modify those work sets in your absence. Unless, of course, you have someone like me, a BIM coordinator or a BIM manager to force each users out of the work set. But the standard practice is before you shut down your model, Please relinquish everything that's been assigned to you by our work sets.
So that concludes the video. I hope you've learned. Let me know what you've learned in the comment section. And if you do have questions about some of the process, leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer them. Remember, it's only simple if you know how to do it. If you don't know, you don't know. Peace.